So in the Northern Hemisphere, at least, it's summertime at the moment, which unfortunately means it's also fire season. And there's been a lot in the news recently around fires in Maui and Hawaii. Yeah, that's a terrible um, one. They went in Maui. We were recently in Greece. We happened to be mm. in Rhodes right when the fires were happening there. In fact, our hotel got turned into an evacuation centre, yeah. um, which is something I haven't seen before, despite being an Australian um, and somewhat familiar with fires. Uh, that was... Uh, yeah, you know, you impactful. See because I woke up at about five o'clock in the morning to mm -hmm. go to the airport and I'm walking through the foyer and there's all these people sleeping everywhere. I'm thinking, does the hotel know there's people sleeping everywhere? <laughs> they knew. <laughs> they knew. And they families were well, trying to sleep because yeah. they'd had a rough night being yeah, kicked yeah. out of their hotels and whatnot. And, yeah, uh, they didn't look very comfortable yeah. at all. Yeah. But it also got me thinking about, you know, at the Institute, we've delivered training to a lot of people in roles related to emergencies like fires. Mm. So whether it's first responders who are yeah. you know, needing skills to look after their own well-being, you know, after what they've been through in responding to different scenarios. Or uh, we recently trained 1500 staff of an insurance company that uh, managed the home claims for people who'd lost their homes to fire, for example and community members and volunteers you mm. know, training them around things like trauma-informed practice and how to work with people who've been through trauma so it's a, it's a topic that is relevant in many different mm. ways and uh yeah just wanted to have a chat about it today. yeah yeah no definitely people are interested in trauma uh, mm. but one thing i would like to remind people trauma is not as common as most people think trauma it's an extreme reaction to an event so a very small percentage of people yeah. suffer from yeah. trauma. Now, we can be impacted by something and still have an impact to our mental health yeah. without being traumatized. That's right. So trauma and in psychology is very specific. And we've got to be really careful, I think, with the language we use, because when we make assumptions and we use words like, oh, you know, this person's being traumatized by something, we can sometimes actually make it worse you better be careful, by yeah. setting this expectation that if you've been through an event, you will be you know, traumatized for the rest of your life yeah. when we know that that's not the case. Statistically yeah. speaking, only a small proportion of people, I'm sure everyone's affected mm. by something, the things that they go through in life, but statistically only a small percentage of people will get to the point where it's considered a trauma, a trauma. response and, you know, they'll, they'll need additional help with that. And the reason for that is because in psychology, there's a there's very particular therapies for a trauma. Mm than for something that is disturbing or distressing to a yeah. person. Different yeah. different treatments. Yeah. You know, obviously the trauma one requires a much mm. more heavy mm. approach. Yeah. However, we can't take away from the, the fact yeah. that in the Maui fa fires, yeah. this has been a little bit uh, traumatic in a sense to the whole world, because we're all aware of this. Mm. Um, when you look at the pictures of, of the fire, the, the devastation of the fire is incredible. Yeah. Uh, what's happened there and um, it makes very little sense to the human mind how can something like that happen mm. um, to that level yeah. of catastrophe um, and that's one of the things we know whether it's a direct experience of an event like that itself or whether it's a vicarious experience mm. watching on the news and mm. hearing other people talk about it etc the existential aspect of of responding to mm. something like that so and by that I mean you know when people become aware that you know, I thought I had control over my life, but there are situations where exactly. things happen that are outside of your mm. control. And that can be a real shock to our system um, mm. psychologically. And mm. that's, I think, one of the biggest impacts because, you know, there's a lot of emotions, obviously, that mm. are normal emotions after an event. Um, but one that people don't expect is just how much it mm. gets people thinking about, you know, well, what if I? What's the meaning of life mm. if I don't have control over these things? Yeah. You know, how do I have any certainty in anything ever mm. at all? And um, people need to kind of work through that process. Of and and that is a normal human response because yeah. when we hear of a story in which there are characters, whether the story is real or not, yeah, we always identify with the character. Yeah, so that's how we learn. Uh, that we show empathy. Yeah. So it's normal for a human being to hear of a, a news event. And to go if they if they stop and pay attention to it, yeah. to say how would I react in that situation? Yeah. What would I do? Yeah. Would I be one of the ones that get caught out or not? Yeah. So existentially, and we assume correct. that we wouldn't. Oh no, I would do this. I would do yeah, that. Yeah. I would be prepared, and that protects us and makes mm. us feel good. But 
then you find out in the moment that that's not always possible. Well, there's a part of us that knows that we're bullshitting ourselves, that we know that we can't prevent everything yeah. in life. We know that one day we will die. We, it will be us. Yeah. We don't know how, we don't know in what circumstances, but we are finite yeah. and we know that. So this serves us to prepare us for that moment, mm -hmm. hopefully, mm -hmm. but most people would rather not think mm -hmm. of that moment mm -hmm. because it, it is mm -hmm. it's scary. Yeah. It's scary to think that one day we're going to die. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to finish. But it is important that we're prepared for it. But it does throw us into yeah. an existential crisis uh, for most of us. Yeah. Even and if it's and a the mini aim one. is that we can move through that process rather than get caught in it. We can come mm. to, all right, well, seeing as that is the case, that one day I won't be here, am I doing the things that are most important? Am I living my yeah. life the way I want to? Are there yeah. any tweaks or changes that I might want to make, you know, spend more time true. with family or spend, mm. you know, pursue this career instead of that one? Or, mm -hmm. you know, so if we can move through it, we can actually use that for good yeah. and and you know, make sure that we're on path, we're, we're yeah. living a life that's authentic for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But these are all normal responses. In fact, any response after there's been an event like this, we say it's a normal response to an abnormal situation. Mm. Um, and so if we can not panic about it and we can remind ourselves that this is okay, my body and my mind is just doing what it needs to do to cope with what's happened. And when you look at, you know, we have in our training, we look at all the different sort of responses that people can have and you look at each one and there's a logic to each one yeah. even if it might not seem logical in the moment when you actually look at it mm. there's a really good reason that we do what yeah that we respond in the way that we do whether it's avoiding you know shutting mm. down withdrawing from the world for, for a little bit of time mm. that's okay that makes and, and many sense. of the stuff that we teach people have got inbuilt psychological processes yeah. that help them at the neurological level yeah not just at the intellectual level. You know, mm -hmm. people sometimes they say, I'm not sure why I'm doing this exercise. And just trust the process. Yeah. Just go with it. Because we understand what's happening in the neurology. Yeah. But that's and, why it helps yeah. to, you know, in, if mm -hmm. people aren't sort of moving through that process on their own, it can help to have someone who understands that psychology exactly. to come in and say, look, I'll, I'll guide you through this process. Yeah. So, you know, you're right where you need to be. It's all okay. I'll just help you take those next yeah. steps through. And sometimes so, therapy is warranted. But what we know with traumatic events like mm -hmm. Maui mm -hmm. is that forcing people to get counseling yeah. is a bad idea. Yeah. Forcing them. No. People should only access counseling mm -hmm. when they feel they need to. Yeah. When we force people that are not wanting yeah. to talk to talk, we actually make it worse. Yeah. We've got the studies now yeah. to prove it that when we force people to talk about something, because we believe counseling is the way to go. Um, th those people yeah. don't fare very well as a percentage later on. And that's a really good point because we often get asked, you know, how can I help my friend mm. who's been through something? And really the answer is ask them. Mm. Ask them what help they need. And they may or may not know in that moment, but if you come in, you know, demanding, you've, you've got to talk about it when they're not ready, that can do the opposite, um, have the opposite impact to what you want. Or vice versa, if you go in and you don't say anything about it and they really need to talk, then mm -hmm. that can, so, right, so yeah. it's really that sort of negotiation yeah, and yeah. checking in regularly yeah. and just kind of feeling out where are they at, what do they need, how can, you know. Yeah. So I think the final words to the Maui people, we send you our love and, and our thoughts and our prayers and we hope that uh, we can put this horrible event as quickly as as we can behind us. I know it's going to be a recovery stage for mm -hmm. them. So thank you.